Hello, you're watching Telecom TV. I'm Guy Daniels, Director of Content. Tirana Wireless provides solutions for next generation fixed wireless access, optimizing radio signals to overcome existing network economics issues for CSPs. Well, joining me now to explain more and to talk about the broadband access challenge is Basil Olwan, who is Chief Executive Officer of Tirana Wireless. Hello, Basil. Very good to see you. And thanks so much for joining us on the programme. Now, I have to ask, first of all, why is the digital divide still a persistent problem? Because we've been grappling with this for years. What do you think is the biggest hindrance to closing this digital gap? Yeah, it really is a thorny problem, and it's going to be with us for a number of years to come. And the, re the fundamental reason why closing the digital divide, especially for home broadband, is so difficult is the sheer capacity needed to serve a home. And many people don't know this, but it takes about 50 times the capacity or let's say tonnage in a given month, amount of gigabytes or terabytes, as the case may be, you need to deliver 50 times more bandwidth to serve a home than it, is to, it takes to serve a mobile. So homes are voracious consumers of, of capacity and, and tonnage. And, and, and that comes from obviously big screen TVs, 4K TVs and things left on and streaming. Video on demand is playing a very big role in driving that. So with all of those needs uh, you know, on a home or certainly a business, you know, the question becomes, how do you deliver that cost effectively, which is the second part of the problem. If you could get 50 times the, 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 the payment for it, of course, no problem. But you can't. You're going to get ARPU that's not uh, that's similar to, let's say, what you might get for a, a mobile service. Therefore, you have a real challenge. How do you get? How do you deliver that sheer amount of capacity and still uh, stay within a budget that makes sense? And, and that ends up creating a, a challenge for technology because uh, mobile uh, wireless technologies tend to do a great job as the. 4G, 5G systems do delivering to these uh, mobile devices. And now they're actually being used as a tool sometimes for homes business, but that's pretty expensive spectrum and it's pretty expensive capacity. So Basil, how is this digital divide currently being bridged? You know, what, are the, what are the efforts that are, are failing to address the problem at the moment? Yeah, I wouldn't say they're failing. I would just say there's not going fast enough, right? So there's a bunch of different options you have. And of course, geographies matter here. Sparse density and, and how sparse or dense a particular location is has a huge impact on which tool you might use. Uh, if it's a super dense area, fiber makes sense because you know you have enough subscribers to justify the, the sheer amount of investment of trench and actually put in the fiber infrastructure. So there's actually a a pretty good result there. Now, if you start to get a little bit more sparse, um, you know, in urban and then suburban and then ultimately to rural, that business case gets tougher and tougher. And certainly to the extreme, if you're in a very rural area, running a fiber is just cost prohibitive. Therefore, you re rely on other technologies. For, in for instance, uh, you might rely on uh, something like a satellite. LEO satellites are actually helping to solve that problem uh, pretty well. In the middle, uh, is a real challenge, by the way, you know, because there's there's traditional infrastructure, DSL, which has really run out of gas at this point, and cable that is good if upgraded enough. But if it's not, it has its own issues because it was really meant to be a one-way medium initially. So the uplinks can be quite difficult. So investment in that middle area is is tougher. It's tougher to sort out. And that's where, you know, a new technology approach is really needed. Well, you've spoken about the amount of data needed, you've spoken about capacity issues, the limitations of, of fiber. So Tirana has promoted a new technology termed NGFWA, Next Generation Fixed Wireless Access. Where can this make a difference in closing the digital divide or connectivity gap versus existing services as you've spoken about, such as fiber? Yeah, Toronto is a really interesting company. It really took a, a very long road, more than a decade of R&D and, and, uh, and investment to try to solve this problem with a technology, uh, new technology, which you correctly termed NGFWA, Next Gen Fixed Wireless Access. So what is NGFWA precisely? If you look at the, the major wireless standards out there for delivering uh, bits to, to homes and businesses, and I'm really focusing here on non-line of sight. One of the challenges of wireless is that line of sight is relatively straightforward to deliver high speeds and good performance at low cost, actually. But most homes and businesses are, are non-line of sight. You know, there's trees, there's obstacles, and you just don't have enough cell towers. You know, to get a line of sight link to every home, you'd have to put up way, way too many cell towers. So the reality here is non-line of sight is the key. 
And the two major standards that deliver non deliver non line of sight kind of uh, signals is Wi Fi, which has been used um, actually at times for uh, connecting homes and businesses, but has some pretty severe limitations because it was really built for as a local area network technology is fantastic for that. And then of course the mobile network and the mobile network was uh, also does a great job, but it's really focused on delivering capacity to handsets. The idea from at Toronto was to kind of relook at that and say, hey, is there a way to build a wireless system that's much higher capacity, but doesn't break the bank? And uh, of course, Moore's law, you know, the uh, evolution of technology gives you those options at times to say, you know, if we do uh, a lot more processing, especially on the remote node, which is the key here, uh, can we deliver a much better service? And the answer turns out to be uh, yes. And that's what NGFWA. So NGFWA is licensed or unlicensed, which is really important. It can operate in either licensed or unlicensed uh, spectrum. It's non-line of sight, near line of sight, or clearly line of sight as well. It can do all of those, right? But it delivers a tonnage uh, or the sheer capacity that customers need, especially post COVID, where you know, people are working from home, they're expecting not 10 megabits or 15, but 100, 200 gigabit. This technology can deliver that with a really proper uplink, low latency, um, but still hit the economics. So you're ticking all the boxes here. So where are you seeing your initial deployments? Is it mostly in rural locations or um, are you also seeing deployments in, in metro and, and urban environments? We're absolutely seeing both at this point. So the product started shipping last year, mid last year, and, and it's not been, uh, the demand has been extremely high for it. So we're, we're uh, building it as fast as we can uh, in a really challenging supply chain environment, but the demand is coming from multiple places. We have some very large customers like MTN in South Africa that are deploying it in very uh, urban settings. We also have a lot of WISPs that are using the product that are, 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 are um, deploying it in, let's say dense rural. Uh, the sweet spot for the product is actually where there is a bit of density. It's not really um, cost effective to pick up two or three homes. You're not going to do, you can do that other ways. You can satellite other possibilities there. But if you have 50, 100 on a sector, so on a tower, you know, you have at least 100 going to 500, 600, 700 uh, customers, you know, this is, a, this is the solution because uh, we can really uh, help. So what's happening with a lot of the guys that have traditionally served the rural market when they get our product, they, they can't believe it. Uh, it's, it's a really seeing is believing kind of product because once you test it, and this has happened almost universally, they're like, okay, now I understand what I can do with this technology. And they realize that this is not just a traditional FWA kind of option. This is something that can really deliver, again, importantly, an unlicensed or a licensed spectrum. So all of a sudden there's a new tool in the toolbox. And so what's happening is a lot of those guys that were, let's say, on the corner edge of town serving the rural, they're turning their attention to providing alternatives uh, to, the, to, to, the, to cities and towns and you know, sectors that are quite dense, like the ones you see behind me, are actually in operation at this point with hundreds of subs, uh, getting, all getting 100 megabit, 200 megabit, 400 megabit kind of services. Is this an either or solution or is it possible for fiber and FWA broadband to work together? That's a great question because, uh, you know, uh, of course, the first, first answer is also, well, of course, this is better than fire. But the reality is that solving the broadband issue is going to take a lot of technologies because, you know, as I said, it's, you know, different, different locations, different morphologies, you have to use different technologies. So it really is uh, a real complementary technology to fiber. If I were investing in a fiber plant and I was building a whole bunch of dense areas, there's going to be naturally a bunch of areas around you where you either didn't get government funding or you, or the density doesn't work or the economics don't work, but you've, but you've got the network there and you're marketing in that location and you've got backhaul and we can absolutely help you edge out from your, your fiber locations. And the, and the combination is economically much better. It's much better for subscribers because you get, you get to hit a broader set of, of customers that have a really great broadband experience, but it's also much better for the business case. So it's absolutely a great complement to fiber. And we're seeing that we're seeing a lot of the fiber players, realize that there's now a, a broadband alternative that's not a temporary. So one thing about NGFWA is it's not a temporary answer to broadband. It's a long, long-term answer. The technology today, we deliver, you know, 600 megabit kind of service and below, we can make those packages available to customers, even at the cell edge. But where this technology is going, it, it's a fundamentally different uh, approach here is it's going to gigabit and certainly uh, going to three gigabits. So we have that on the roadmap and we've already demonstrated that. And it's a fairly straightforward step from here to there. So the point is that if you deploy with this, it's not, you don't have to come back and clean up with fiber. 
you can just make the right choice as to where economically it makes more sense to provide uh, a, a solution based on NGWA and where it makes sense to run fiber. And the answer is almost always going to be there's there, there, a bit of both. Now, you mentioned government initiatives earlier. How has dedicating more government resources to deploying broadband solutions, such as through President Biden's infrastructure bill in the US, affected the industry? Yeah, so government funding is having an essential impact on, on broadband. As you know, around the world, this, you know, the understanding from governments as if they needed to understand even more post-COVID is how important broadband is to a population and to productivity. So there's a really clear understanding of that. And with that comes government initiatives and government programs. And it's not just US, obviously, this is global. You know, the UK, Australia, Europe, even uh, developing economies really understand this and are putting government resources, uh, bringing government resources to bear on the challenge. Now with that comes a couple of things. I mean, first of all, you create economics that uh, otherwise would not be there to do investment. So you can reach a broader set of customers that otherwise might not have met the threshold of an investment case. Now, NGFWA also helps there because we can help the investment case for uh, a sparser area. So you put these two together and you start to get a, a much better coverage you know, in, in places that you're really trying to solve this, this, this uh, very difficult problem. But in general, I would say uh, government funding comes with a bunch of uh, you know, challenges, but on balance does help to stimulate the competition and bring more choices to customers and ultimately help us uh, solve this problem, which is, is gonna take still five to 10 years to get fully kind of there, but it'll accelerate it. And that's what we're seeing. Now, we're not just talking about the US here. How global is the opportunity for NGFWA? Are there certain geographies that are perhaps more or, or less attractive for adoption? Yeah, so it's a really interesting question because obviously it, it's a global challenge. Uh, we've looked at uh, geographies everywhere. And, and of course, there's a couple of things we, we take a hard look at. Number one, ARPUs, because ARPUs do matter. Even with government funding, you still have to have uh, a certain amount of ARPU to, to justify even a wireless link. So ARPUs matter um, and government uh, programs matter. But all the other things we look at, frankly, is fiber penetration, um, uh, you know, whether or not uh, the spectrum is available uh, and is uh, possible to be used properly in the various areas. And when you look at that, though, there's a very, very big global market for this product. Uh, as I mentioned, we're already deploying in South Africa, but we're also now in trials and or deploying in La Latin America countries, in European countries, and now more recently in, in parts of APAC. So um, it's, it's quite, uh, a, quite a global problem, uh, therefore quite a global opportunity. As you say, Basil, it's a global problem. I'm still got a lot of work to be done, but uh, thank you so much for joining us today and sharing your views on how we can finally bridge the digital divide. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. Thank you, Guy. Appreciate it.